First of all, um, as Christine said, Aaron understands everything that is going on and he communicates fully using his hands. And that's, he answers one for yes and two for no. And he, when he's tired of that, he snaps his fingers for yes. Yeah. Okay. And the first thing that I always like to ask Aaron is, Aaron, do you want to be here today to tell your story? One for yes, two for no. Do you want to be here today? Yes. Okay. And have I discussed with you how to answer or what I'm going to ask you? One for yes, two for no. So everything that you answer is of your own thought and of your own mind? Yes. So let's get down to it. When Aaron overdosed, as you saw from the DVD, he was in a coma for three and a half weeks. He took Oxycontin and alcohol and some other prescription pills. He was spending the night with a friend. And we were trying to get a hold of Aaron to have breakfast with us, as we do every morning on Sundays. And the cell phone alerted the mom to Aaron sleeping on the couch. And in her own words, she said Aaron was blue and non-responsive. This is a family that we have known since Aaron was in Pop Warner, eight years old. And at the time Aaron overdosed, he was 23. So we've known the, the parents and his friend for that many years. The mom, in her own words, said she beat on his chest. She threw ice on him. Then they used Aaron's cell phone to call the pharmacy in Tijuana where their son had purchased the drugs. Then they called another friend who was an EMT and said, what do we do, what do we do? And the EMT said, call 911. They still didn't call 911. Then, as Aaron was not breathing and blue, they didn't want a dead body in their home. So they dragged Aaron, the father and son, dragged Aaron into the car, threw him in the back seat, brought him to the nearest hospital, which is about 15 minutes away. And when they arrived at the hospital and staff asked, why is he like this? What is wrong with him? They said they had no idea. So they gave no information that could help Aaron. This is a family that knew Aaron since he was eight years old. A family that we did Pop Warner parties with, pizza parties, all these events. They ultimately cared more about their selves because they had drugs in their home than they did about our son. So I want you to really change that behavior. Yes, it's very scary when someone overdoses. And just like I'm going to reiterate what Jody said, call 911. Be a friend to a friend and call 911. When we got to the hospital, they said, I'm sorry, you're going to lose your son today. And I think that every one of you in this room, do you have a best friend? Raise your hand if you have a best friend. Right? Do you want your best friend to die? I don't think so. So think about that. Think about that. It's better to save someone's life than to get in trouble. And most of the time you won't get in trouble. Okay, so that's one of the points that you've seen a lot of the points that we cover in the videos and what Jody and Christine um, talked to you about already. But for me, that is the biggest, biggest, biggest point. You can see how miraculously Aaron has improved. And he was deprived of oxygen for over 32 minutes when he could have had an EMT there in six. So you could see every second that your brain is deprived of oxygen is a level of debilitation that your body will experience. So it's really important to get the EMT there and oxygen into the body. Because when you overdose on opiates, what happens, which happened with Aaron, he was laying on the couch and because he had all of that medicine in his, in his heart, it slowed down his heart, which slowed down his, his lungs, which in fact did not allow oxygen to go to the air, to his brain. And so it kill, it's killing your brain little by little by little. No oxygen, no oxygen, no oxygen. 
and that's what it does to your brain, and it kills parts of your brain. Aaron had the heart attack, two strokes, front and back, both sides of his brain. Only a quarter of his brain was not affected. And I think sometimes we have a misconception. Aaron, when, um, let's go backwards a little bit. Were you doing uh, alcohol, drugs, marijuana, and pills when you were in high school? One for yes, two for no. Close your hand in high school. Close your hand. One for yes, two for no. Did you ever think anything bad was going to happen to you, Aaron? One for yes, two for no. No. Did you have a lot of hopes and dreams that you wanted to do in high school? Yeah. Can you do those and accomplish those hopes and dreams now, Aaron? One for yes, two for no. No. Is it too late for anyone in this audience to accomplish their dreams? No. Is it anybody else's fault but your own, Aaron, the quality of life you have today? One for yes, two for no. No. Was it your choice to take these pills, Aaron? One for yes, two for no. Yes. Ultimately, it's your choice. We can stand here and we can show you, Aaron, we can show you the film, but you ultimately have the choice, which we hope you don't make. But if you do, you ultimately will be the one who, who will suffer the consequences, as Aaron does, and he does it like a man. He knows that he did. He did this to himself. He made that choice, and that choice put him in a position with people that were making the same choice who only care about doing the drugs. Aaron, are the people and friends that you party with really your friends? One for yes, two for no. No. They're not. And how tragic that sounds that they didn't call 911 for Aaron, that's really common. This is not a special story. It happens all the time. But most of the time, people die. And Aaron survived in another type of way. But Aaron's quality of life is not what it could be or what it should be. But he takes that responsibility because of his choices. Aaron did come to his dad and tell him that he needed help. Was that true? Yes, and so Aaron went to inpatient, outpatient um, rehabs, and then finally residential rehab, which he stayed for seven months, and not knowing about addiction, we thought, oh my gosh, this is great. He, we have our son back, he can come home, holidays, and all of that. Well, that's not the case. Four weeks after Aaron overdosed. If you are in, if you have made that choice, please do get help. And don't, get, don't give up if it doesn't work the first time. Just continue and continue getting help because you can be successful. You can be. There are success stories. But it's very, very difficult. So we, we get enough diseases that we don't choose. Diabetes, cancer, things like that in our lives. Why make a choice? At, yes, at first it's a choice. Why make a choice to give yourself a disease that you don't have to have? That you don't need to deal with? Life is hard enough, really, and you'll see that. It's gotten harder as you go, right? And it only gets harder. So don't give yourself any more obstacles to be successful in life. And I'm going to ask Aaron uh, one more question. And, and really, Aaron is the message. Not me. And I'm going to ask Aaron if I can share some of his writings from his rehab journal. Yes? So this is Aaron's own words, what he was dealing with while in the midst of addiction. Alcohol and drugs first became, began as a social habit for after football games, weekends, and special events. I did stupid and insane things when I was loaded. I am at the gym with friends, addicts, cooking oxy to shoot. I am 22 in my bedroom. I have been popping pills. I have to call my dad to take me to the hospital. 
I am sick. I can't even stop taking pills, even after detox. All my behavior while drinking and using was out of control. Accidents, self-inflicted injury, and emotional distress. My life was not a life, but a roller coaster of pain, shame, sadness, and depression. I just want to feel normal. I am ashamed of the life I'm leading. I am in a mental fog, and I don't know what's going on. I am not me. I am heavily using and losing myself. Instead of being at family events, I was using or coming down from using the night before. Instead of work, I would go to my friends and use. It was a sad, sorry, unproductive life. I am unable to be successful in life, unable to beat this addiction. That's just few of the, a few of the thoughts that Aaron had in his rehab journals, but it shows you how difficult it was for Aaron, even when he wanted to change, even when he wanted to to break the cycle of addiction. And I want to mention one thing that Erin, you, you did start, you smoke marijuana? Yes. And I just want to kind of, I know I saw a lot of you guys smile and kind of smirk when they were talking in the movie about um, marijuana being the gateway drug. Every addict started with marijuana. Not every marijuana user becomes an addict, but every addict started with marijuana. You just don't know if you will be an addict or not, so why make the choice? So I really, really, really need you to understand that, and, and it doesn't, one party, one pill, one person is not worth your future, not worth your dreams, not, not worth, anything, you are more valuable than that to yourself. And Aaron, do you want to see anyone in this room use pills, drugs, marijuana, alcohol? No. He all, this is why we're here today, and Aaron's not getting a massage with a really cute blonde massage lady like he usually does, because we care about you. I'm not out getting a pedicure or manicure or having lunch with my friends. We don't have to do this. It's not something we have to do, it's something we need to do, and we're doing it for you, for you. So we'd like you to remember Aaron's story, and when the next time someone offers you something in fun, think about that. We work with the DEA a lot, and a lot of the people that they arrest, it's not about fun anymore. Maybe it's fun one or two times, but then it's because you're holding off the withdrawals. That's, that's what it's about. It's maintaining the disease. So the fun goes out the window very, very quickly. And is that how you felt, Erin? Yes. And when you couldn't get the drugs and you were trying to do it on your own, did you feel like you were going to die? Yes. So don't put yourself in that position. Take care of yourself. And, and remember Aaron, that's why he's here today, and make a good choice.